Um, it's a shame that I have to say my son, but to me, the way our society is set up, I feel like I have to remind people that children of African American descent matter. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how the project came about. My son used to be in a choir a while ago, the Keystone Boys Choir, and I never forget I was with another parent, and the parent said, Denise, have you heard about the Trayvon Martin incident? And at that time, I heard about it, but I didn't really know the details and all. Push the glass up there. <laughs> um, I didn't really know the details. And she said, you should do something about it. And the more details I found out about it, the more I said, I need to speak up. I used to shoot catalog in Chicago. I used to, I had a studio in New York for a while. But I put the camera down, ooh, 30 years ago. And I put it down because this was an epidemic was going on, the AIDS epidemic, epidemic. And I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of colleagues. And I just felt like taking fashion pictures and all was a little privilege. Like, I needed to get back. So I went back to school and I became a red teacher. And it wasn't until I sat there with a friend of mine when my son was in choir practice that I realized I have a voice. I know what I can do to say something. And would you speak? So I started off with a project called By the Content of My Character. This is only six of the 26 pieces. I interviewed and photographed 26 young men, put them in hoodies, and put them in environments that best describe themselves. And I guess I wanted people to say, look, they have a hoodie on. You can't judge a book by its cover. Take a minute and look at them. Just look at them. I did that, I guess Trayvon Martin died, it was a three or four years ago, I'm not quite sure. But um, I did it then, and things didn't get better. <laughs> and one thing that bothered me during the whole, every time someone killed is the press. The press would always come up to the mother, whether they're married or not, would come to the mother and say, can you tell me about your son? Can you tell me how you feel? And it seemed like the world got quiet for a minute just so they could hear the mother's response. And I always felt like, well, you, how do you think they feel? So, I mean, it was a dumb question, but everyone got quiet and they put the mic there. I wanted to give mothers a chance to speak life into their child, to speak life into the situation while their child was alive, to actually let people see that these boys have mothers. They have someone that cares about them, that's putting, trying to put values into them and trying to do the best that they can. I wanted to try to change the whole image of the black boy and let you see them with their mother. Give the mothers a chance to, to say what they go through. I wanted to document some of the conversations that we have to have with our child on a daily basis, a daily basis. My son just started driving, and I had a relative take him out at first, and you know how kids are, they think, they, well, you guys think you know everything. <laughs> and they say, Mom, I got this, I got this. You know, Uncle Bruce told me, you know, when I'm in the suburban neighborhoods, I have to drive slower than the speed limit. I have to do this because I'm going to get stopped. I mean, these are just normal things that you have to tell them. You know, another, there's so many stories, but we have to teach them on a regular basis. And you can't just do it once. So the point of my show is basically to give mothers a chance to speak about their child, to put them in an environment where they can define their child, where they can talk about some of the lessons they have to teach them, and hopefully just open awareness that, you know, I think in some ways I'm preaching to the choir with some of the kids, because they know what it's about. But my message to you guys is just make it home. That's all you need to do is make it home at night. You know, do what you have to do. On my flyer, I have a list of things that you can do if you're stopped by the police. Just make it home. There's ways of handling this. Yes, it's wrong, it's not fair, but you can get the, the police officer's badge name and number and write to the commissioner and things like that. There are ways to handle it, but you can't do it if you're not here. I don't know what happened to Mike Brown, Jordan Davis, Trayvon. I'm not sure I wasn't there, but what I can tell you is make it home. That's what your mom wants. They don't care about the rest. Any questions? Yes? Um, I wanted to ask why did you choose uh, to do the mothers instead of the fathers or both? Okay, well I think for starters it started with me, I'm a single mom. 
I adopted my son, so there's not a father figure there. I mean, my, my father is there, and I do have brothers and things. So I think it was more personal. That's what gave me the energy to keep going, because this is really a lonely job. You have to find have something inside of you that a fire burning to keep you doing it, because it's you're doing it all by yourself. No one's telling you. But one thing that I've realized is that mothers are matriarchs of the family. It doesn't make a difference if a man is there or not. A mom's going to make sure things happen. You know, <laughs> men do it too, but not like a mother. Um, so that's why I focused on mothers. And actually, I'm going to take the project a step further and talk about all mothers. You know, it doesn't make a difference if you're married or not. Because just that, we are matriarchs. We want to make sure that they get what they need. So that's why I picked it. Um, so hopefully, you know, like another 10 years when you're a mother, <laughs> you will realize that, you know, it's all about your child. Now, it's, it's the same thing for fathers, but it's a different kind of bond. And also, I think people needed to see our young men with their mothers, with their parents. This is somebody's child who you might be afraid of when you see them. It's someone's child. So that's why. Do you ever think that you would do a project of highlighting the fathers? Uh, fathers, well, I think what I'm going to do, I probably will add some, yes. Because I think even though mothers are the matriarch, the main, the, the one common thread to all of it is the conversations. It doesn't make a difference where it comes from. The conversations have to be had on a normal, on a regular basis. So I'm quite sure quite a few men have approached me and said, when is my turn? So I think I'm going to slowly put it in. And even though it's my son matters, I think I'm going to change it to just the conversations we have to have. Because girls have a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things going on there. So I got a lot of work to do. I know between the girls and be, between the, the fathers and all. But there's something about a mother and that bond with their child. You know, the fact that the media even will go to the mother, not the father. They go to the mother. So that's why. Hey. Come on in. This is Julie Mabel. She's oh. one of the mothers. Yay. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? Any comments? I just I just like the message that you say when you're I I know a lot of I know a lot of parents who lost I mean I know a lot of parents who lost their kids. Uh, they just be wishing that they could have one more picture of one more moment with their kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like the message that you said. Mm -hmm. So, and this is Julie. Want to ask her any questions? <laughs> Good friend of mine and a mother here. Any? Uh, why you don't leave one smiling like that? Why you not smiling like that with you? <laughs> um, we're 17 years old. <laughs> Is that why you're not smiling? Yeah, 17. You know, nothing his mother wants to do with it. Oh, I'm just joking. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. And it was hard to get him to smile, believe me. It, it was. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like. Yeah. You know, I, I think a lot of them, they were sort of, especially the older ones, were like, why do I have to do this? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions, comments? Please tell your friends to come by. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you guys are going to the CAF, come, come tell your friends to come on over. Okay, feel free to leave more comments. They make the comments on this piece of paper. No, I want to.